Okay, and welcome to a Little Couple co-production video series uh, with Health Watch Suffolk. Myself, Sue Conker and Amanda Langley are absolutely delighted to welcome two guests with us today. Nat Clarkson, who's one of our co-production ambassadors, and Pete Fleischman. And I'm going to let Peter Fleischman introduce himself um, and then we'll hand over to Nat for an introduction and we're going to have a really exciting conversation. So thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Pete Fleischman. I'm a freelance consultant and I work, well, it's my own consultancy and it's called Co-Production Works. Um, and it's a consultancy that supports public sector organisations to do co-production. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us, Pete. Really good um, to meet you, Pete. We've got our cup of teas today, but we are doing an online version of our um, cup of co-production chat. <laughs> 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 um, because Pete's joining us um, from a different location, not a Suffolk-based um, co-producer. So we're really excited to learn a bit more about co-production from a national perspective um, and maybe some examples from further afield away from Suffolk as well. Nat, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, Pete. Great to have you on board with us. So um, I'm Nat Clarkson. I was the first co-production ambassador uh, who came on board at the start of 2020, right before lockdown. So it was quite an <clears throat> interesting time to become a co-production ambassador. Um, my personal journey up to that present day was quite a complicated one when I first needed help from the system and it all went a bit pear-shaped. You know, I won't go into too much details, but it it was very complicated and I had to navigate a system that wasn't there to help me whilst I was in crisis and me being me I wanted to troubleshoot and look at the reasons why these things were happening and I uncovered um, many many things that then opened even more doors to all the the sort of failings that were going on and and here we are now uh, two years later. Fantastic. Pete, do you want to give us a bit more of um, a background history of yourself and sort of a little bit of your journey into um, co-production up until up until now? Sure. Well, a little similar to Nat, I think. Um, I used, I mean, uh, I, I had like mental health issues in my sort of like late teens, early 20s. And that was a really a difficult part of my life, really. And um, yeah, obviously I used, many, you know, I tried to use mental health services but I didn't find them really very helpful and they they didn't really address the root causes of what was going on for me and I mean some treatments that I got like I had um electric shock treatment which I found like really unhelpful um really really unhelpful in fact that sort of like made me think I've got to find a different way of doing this and um that was basically how I got into the what was then this was the sort of sort of late 80s 90s um giving away how old i am now <laughs> <laughs> but uh um and uh, that's how i got involved in the sort of mental what we call the mental health service user movement and i got involved in a local eventually in a local organization called bug which was brent mental health user group and at that time we were talking about user involvement that was the th that was the thing service user involvement um and that's that was I mean those experiences in the mental health system and then working locally with a small organisation sort of trying to get changes in the system um, were really both experiences really shaped me and I, I still got lots of friends um, from that from that time um, uh, also lost some friends from that time as well sadly for various reasons but um, but I think my then my and then uh, I sort of started working in different I, I got interested in other services apart from mental health services and sort of was, you know, I, because we, I had quite a lot to do with disability organisations locally and sort of and nationally and sort of really found out that everybody who's using the health system and the social care system have got similar problems and are similarly sort of excluded from having a real voice within those services and i guess that's how something that was like a quite a hard experience um became kind of like a career really which i never thought it would really become so then i, I worked 
I worked locally, then I worked sort of more, I gradually worked more nationally um, and also broadened out working with just lots of different people. So, you know, I've worked with people with mental health issues, but I've also worked with refugees, people with brain injuries, physically disabled people, people with learning difficulties, um, re care experienced people, all sorts of people, uh, people with brain injuries. And it's all, I mean, the principles are always the same, but there's sort of different barriers for different groups, I think, and different things that you've got to overcome. Um, yeah, so that's my... And then I was working for the Social Care Institute for Excellence. I was head of co-production there for about 16 years, in fact. I was there for quite a long time. And then the last couple of years, I've been freelance, so I started my own consultancy co-production works. And that's been really interesting. I've done some really interesting projects um, since I've been freelance, and it's, it's been, been a good good experience, really. So I'd like to ask you, Pete, um, thank you for that. Um, so you said about how you started off as, as a kind of on a user forum. How did you make the kind of the link from that into more co-production? How did co-production come in? Um, I think sort of, I don't know, I think it was maybe seven, I don't know, five to seven years. I'm not very good at keeping keeping track of time. But um, there was a, there was a time when we, we um, when I was working for Sky, the Social Care Institute for Excellence, we had something called the Partners Council, which was kind of like a co-production thing, but we didn't call it that. We called it the Partners Council. And to start with, I was, um, my job title was Head of Participation. And we did a review um of the Partners Council and of our arrangements for involvement. Um, and after that review, I think that was just sort of co-production was just like we were starting to sort of hear about it and sort of people were wondering, what is this thing co-production? And we sort of collectively, because there, there was a lot of mm. stakeholders involved, but we, we kind of thought, should we change our model to co-production? And would that give it a kind of fresh boost and sort of fresh interest and um, and um, and so we looked at sort of what was out there around co-production at the time. There wasn't a huge amount, um, and um, we just thought, yeah, let's 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 go for it because one and one of the reasons we wanted to do that was because I think um, at that time co-production was very much something that think tanks and sort of academics were talking about, and it seemed that in what they were writing about, they were really leaving out like actual people who are using services it was it was very kind of academic and think tanky and very sort of snazzy and sort of you know they had nice pamphlets and things but um they weren't really talking about and i thought that they kind of had been they were really ignoring groups like the group that i'd been working for in the past and other groups that i knew about and so we wanted to kind of rebalance it we wanted to sort of try and kind of claim co-production for our for, as something that was um part of the disabled people's movement and part of the mental health service users movement and other and other movements that were happening at the, at the time um not that we did you know we thought that the think tanks had some really interesting ideas and they did really, really yeah. great work but we just wanted to sort of we thought that they were sort of ignoring something important yeah make it relevant to everybody yeah 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 mm. 